Alright, hey guys, welcome back to Crimson Grey. This is Impetikashi here, and we are now on our fifth episode. So, let us commence with the continuation. We all know what we're going to do here. Come on now. You, you can't turn down such an invitation. That would be rude, and we are not rude people here, okay? We are very polite. Okay, I'll stay with you. Oh, John. Lizzie leaned even closer, kissing him gently. For the first time in a very long time, John tried to relax, just to be with someone. She slid one of her legs over his, climbing into his lap and wrapping her arms around his head to deepen the kiss. A moan of pure satisfaction escaped her lips, resonating through him. You want this, don't you? God, Lizzie. Don't stop. But she did, going still and holding his face with both hands so that he met her eyes. He shivered as he saw the unfettered desire in her unblinking eyes. I want you, John, but I want all of you, every last bit. I need to know you want this. Lizzie, I, I've never met anyone like you before. I won't lie and say everything has been easy. But you're the one, the only one, that brings any color to my life. I still can't quite believe you want someone like me. But if you really do, I want you so badly. She responded with a kiss of searing intensity, then pulled away and began tugging at, her, at their clothes. When I'm done, you'll never be able to doubt it again. Lizzie drew him to the couch and caught him in another kiss, and for a time, they lost themselves in each other. Ah, I found you, I found you! That was amazing. Yes, so good. I'll remember this moment forever. So I think we can keep this in the video, because I don't think it went too far. Like, it, nothing graphic was said, and definitely nothing graphic was seen. So I, I think it'll be fine. I think we can keep this in the video. I think we're good. If not, YouTube will take it down and whatever. Oh shit. We didn't put on a condom or anything. We, you, you could get... Pre Shh. She silenced him with a kiss. Less intense than before, but still enough to take his breath away. We don't need to worry about that. I have an IUD. Oh, uh, what? It doesn't matter. What it means is that we can't get pregnant unless we want to. Uh, okay. Is... It is as good as a condom? No condoms. I needed to feel you. Feel you completely. Utterly. Absolutely. After a moment, he decided that he would just have to trust her. He had trusted her this far, after all. John wrapped his arms around her and held her close. They were sweaty and sticky, but Lizzie obviously didn't care. And with her resting against him so peacefully, neither did he. And there you go. The end. No, it's not actually the end. Just kidding. <laughs> that night, they slept together, literally, just lying in the same bed, with their clothes back on. Lizzie curled up against his side, and to his surprise, he went to sleep very quickly. When he woke up the next morning, he found that she was gone, but he could smell something cooking in the kitchen. John climbed out of bed and wandered toward the kitchen. There, he found Lizzie uh, merrily humming to herself and working on several dishes at once. Oh, you're awake. I was going to bring you breakfast in bed, but you woke up too early. It smells great. He thought he should hug her from behind or give her a kiss or something, but he felt strangely shy. Lizzie didn't seem to mind, instead urging him to sit down and relax instead of helping. That felt awkward, but Lizzie is in such a good mood, he decided not to contradict her. As she bustled around the kitchen, frequently shooting him adoring glances or kissing him on the cheek, there was no hint of instability. Did you sleep okay? I really, really hope you did. Uh, yeah, it was fine. Because I've never cared about how comfortable that bed was, but then I realized it might be uncomfortable. If it was, I can get rid of it. It doesn't... It's okay, Lizzie. It was completely comfortable. 
Oh, good. I wanted everything to be perfect. I made so many plans, but then I thought I might have forgotten something, and... Navi did get up to kiss her. It felt a little strange, but she responded with a blissful cooing noise. Breakfast was finished soon. An impressive spread of bacon, eggs, wa and waffles. Lizzie sat and watched him eat the first bite before she took any for herself. They only chatted lightly as they ate, as if making up for how heavy things had been before. It helped him fully wake up, though, and reassured him that Lizzie wouldn't do anything crazy. Well, do anything crazy in the near future. About this, did, did you like it? It tasted just as good as it smelled. It smells. Oh, good. I've never really cared about the foods, the taste of foods before, so I was afraid I hadn't done a good job. You just didn't care about taste? It never seemed to matter, but this breakfast tasted good because I was eating it with you, John. I'm glad, but sorry. I have to go back a second there. You didn't really enjoy food? That's kind of sad. It wasn't sad. I wasn't really... That's not important right now. We can talk about it later. He considered pressing, but decided against it. After all, he hated when people harassed him about details of his condition. Lizzie was working through her problems. He wanted to be helpful, and that meant backing off sometimes. So, I like to spend the entire vacation with you, like every single day, but maybe you want some space too. Well, it's okay, really, but can I walk with you to the bus stop? Of course. She did walk with him, holding his hand almost shyly. Dude, why would you want to go back, though? It's like, your dad's not not even there. He's, like, always at work, or when he is there, you don't seem to really interact with him. It's like, you might as well stay. It's, it's the 80s. I'm sure you might have a video game or two, but you don't seem to be interested in anything like that. You don't seem to be interested in anything. So you might as well, like, except for Lizzie, so you might as well stay there. I mean, like, come on, man. It seemed bizarre that she could be acting shy after they had sex, but John decided that it made sense. She showed a pattern of getting closer, then retreating for a while. He found that depression and energy came in waves as well, and it was better to ride them out instead of fighting the trends. Besides, maybe distance would do her a little good, too. When they, react, when they reached the stop, she let go of his hand, but grasped his sleeve to keep him there. You liked it, right? Liked what? Everything. Our date, and breakfast, and last night? Yeah, I did. You're incredible, Lizzie. I still can't believe you're interested in me. And I don't scare you, do I? Do you want me to change? He stared at her for a moment, trying to decide what kind of question that was, but then eventually shrugged. You seem just fine to me. Is everything all right? <laughs> it is now. I actually stopped taking the Nizzoline the day before our date. Um, so I am debating between accept choice and kiss her. Um, I'm going to kiss her. We're going to go for it. Sensing that there was no right answer to this question, John leaned forward and gave Lizzie a brief kiss. Okay, Lizzie. Whatever you think is best. Aww. She blushed wildly and looked away, her hands twitching against each other. Um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know. You don't need to be worried about me. I know you're mine now. Not exactly a comforting statement, but it seemed clear that Lizzie was doing her best to be reassuring. She looked at him so earnestly, he couldn't bring himself to do anything but agree. Thanks, Lizzie. Mm-hmm. Let's take care of our homework, and then we can spend more time together later in the vacation, okay? Okay, see you soon, John. After watching her for a little while, he got on and headed back to back home. With her, co her constant energy behind him, he felt a lot more subdued, but didn't side slide into depression. John still wasn't sure how he felt about everything. He was happy that was obvious, but he wondered just how stable Lizzie really was. Could things have gone very differently under different circumstances? But they didn't, so he couldn't waste energy worrying about it. For now, 
he was happy to return home and slide into a normal routine for a while. He spent the rest of his Saturday working on the assignments he'd been given for the vacation. It was nothing too bad, but combined with chores around the house, he didn't get any, everything done. His father called once to say he was headed on a surprise company vacation. That was just as well. The house felt awkward with him around. As John went to sleep that night, he decided that he would spend Sunday finishing his work or maybe even hanging out with someone else. Then he'd call Lizzie to go together Monday. That seemed like an appropriate length of time to wait. Who would he hang out with? All his friends, all of his friends are assholes. <laughs> Despite his concerns, she really did seem content. If she could wait until Monday, maybe he could put his worries behind him. Now, see, here's the thing. Me, like me and my friends, sure, we bust each other's balls sometimes. Like you know, what I mean, like we mess around with each other, or like we'll, we'll you know, throw like friendly insults at each other. But if we know someone's actually going through like something really tough, you know, you know when to talk seriously and when to be an asshole. And that's why I'm saying his friends are assholes because they like even though they know his problems, they just don't give a shit. <laughs> Those aren't friends. <laughs> Those are assholes. <laughs> Despite his concerns, she really did seem content. If she could wait until Monday, maybe he could put his worries behind him. And then Sunday morning, he woke up feeling like shit and he knew that his plans were already in the trash. He wanted to just lie there. No, he wanted to die. But he didn't have the strength to even complete, uh, complete that, and so he just lay in bed. But the day, he couldn't lie there forever. A strange surge of motivation struck him, and he managed to crawl over to the phone and call Lizzie's number. Hello? She picked up on the very first ring, but he was too depressed to think much about it. Lizzie, I... Good morning, John. It's not. I'm having a bad day. I'll be crappy company, but if you... I'll come over right now. He didn't even hang up the phone, just curled up on the floor beside it. It felt like an eternity lying there. But it couldn't have been long before Lizzie arrived at the house. You know, I don't know if depression is really like this or not. I'm, I haven't really studied it. Uh, the main thing I've suffered from is like just extreme stress. I don't know if I've ever had depression. I don't think I have. I definitely would not consider myself ever depressed. Uh, I've been listless before. I've been kind of like feeling like there's nothing guiding me before. Uh, but I don't think I've ever truly been depressed and definitely not like this. Uh, but honestly, I know people might say like, you know, it's not good to latch on to something like that in this situation. But honestly, him and Lizzie's relationship normally would not be healthy but given their starting points it, to me it seems healthy in that sense that it's better for both like both of them are in a better mental state of mind together than they are separated if that makes sense again i'm definitely not a therapist or a psychiatrist or a shrink of any kind but it's just like to me this seems like the perfect solution for both of them anyhow Continuing on. He didn't even hang up the phone, just curled up on the floor beside it. It felt like an eternity lying there, but it couldn't have been long before Lizzie arrived at the house. She immediately made him get up and eat something, urging him on with boundless energy. Now he had to move a little, just to avoid disappointing her. After an hour, he wasn't feeling like doing anything, but he managed to force himself to go outside on the assumption that it would help. And it did. For once in his life, he managed to do what Miss Smith told him and socialize instead of withdrawing into himself. To his surprise, it actually helped. Don't thank Miss Smith for it. Thank Lizzie, all right? By the end of the day, he actually felt better. He hadn't believed that in a morning like that, one could be redeemed. Yet somehow, Lizzie had turned it around. Lizzie seemed happy the entire day, but she wasn't intense and sensitive to him. Once he had the mental energy for it, he reflected that she had tempered her enthusiasm to his current mood, always encouraging him just enough. And when he got tired near the end of the day, she noticed and actually left of her own volition. He even managed to do some work and not feel shitty before going to sleep, thinking he had the best girlfriend in the world. At least he recognizes it. At least he recognizes like, what she's doing for him. Like, it's... 
Because, like, the way they describe it, it's like, she's, like, literally putting all her effort into it. It's like, she, she may be crazy in the sense that she's, like, you know, very possessive about him and, like, you know, she has violent tendencies. But her attention to him is sincere, loving, and caring. It's like, that's what I think is the ideal Yandere and the ones that they can actually control themselves and not, you know, going on rampages where they actually kill people. So, again, I don't think Yandere's have to be killers. They have, I think they do have to have the potential to become them, but I don't think they have to be them, if that makes sense. The rest of the vacation passed in a peaceful enough blur. On their last weekend, before they had to go back to school, he ended up back at Lizzie's house. They'd watched a movie on her large but incredibly dusty TV, and now just sat together on the couch. Wait, wouldn't they clean it off before watching it? Mm, this was nice, John. Yeah, it really was. I wish we never had to go back to school. We could be together like this every day, every single day. Well, eventually we'll graduate. And then there's no more school. Hmm, that sounds nice. Though I suppose then there will be work. You never really get a vacation until you retire, I guess. Hmm. I wonder how I'd do with retirement some days. It feels like some my routines are all that keep me going. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Just like I've taken care of everything this vacation. It has been a lot better than usual. Thank you, Lizzie. No, thank you. This has been wonderful. John, do you want to have sex again? Uh, I want whatever you want. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, John. All right, John. Um, again, I don't think there's going to be anything not safe for work because it wasn't last time either. Um, but I want to see how these shorter videos do. So I'm kind of recording quite a few of them that are like, you know, around 20 minutes. So I think this is actually a good point to end it here. So I will. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Again, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Laters.